with the rangefinder back on, top cover down, camera all working correctly. This job's done now, all bar the leather on the base of the camera. So I've got to prepare that, and it's looking a bit ragged. Um, some of that's down to just how difficult it was to get it off the bottom of the camera. So I'm going to check and see if any of these fibres will just cut away, clip them off. And then I'm just going to use some sandpaper and just sand the bottom of this leather slightly to see if I can smooth it out a bit. These are all just loose fibres where it's effectively delaminated as of scraped underneath it to lift it off the camera. That's cut there, that's alright, that'll go back. It's only these little loose bits I want off. This was extremely hard to get this leather off. Uh, I don't know what the adhesive was, as I've said it had a, was a reddish orange colour. And it would dissolve with acetone. I'll show you that now. We'll get some of that rubbish off the back of this piece of leather. But it wouldn't dissolve with anything else. You can see it coming away there. It has a, an appearance similar to something like... Uh, shellac but it's not shellac I've got another camera to do just the same as this one and it may well have used the same adhesive I do not know that being the case, I'll try and put a bit of acetone underneath the leather and see if that'll help me lift the leather off. That's cleaned up a little bit. It's still messy. I'll just see if I can cut the loose fibres off there with a bit of wet and dry sandpaper. This is a bit of 220 grit. I don't know if that's any better than when I started, to tell the truth. I just want to avoid having lumps and bumps under this as much as possible. I think that'll do. Some adhesive. Let's get it on the camera. That's a very generous quantity of adhesive, adhesive there. I wouldn't normally need that much. I need to work some into that because there's a cut there. I wanted to work it into there. And this narrow piece here, that's come apart now. That was not split before. Let's peel that excess adhesive off. Got to make sure I've got a good coat but not too much. If it's too much, it'll ooze out and look ugly. I've got to clean all that excess off. And if I leave it till it hardens up and it's too much, then um, you'll end up with lumps and bumps.
that looks hopeful. And that little piece there, I want that underneath and that piece on top. That's that. That's down, that's down, that's down, that's down. Now there was a cut somewhere around here where I slipped with the scalpel. That's completely disappeared. That actually looks quite good. That's um, a better result than I would have been expecting. So that's the base of our camera. The rest of the camera is all neat and tidy now. Film advance, smooth. Returns to the rest position no problem at all. Front of the camera opens and closes smoothly. Shutter release works smoothly. Range bind is adjusted. Shutter functions correctly at all speeds. I'd say that I'll call that a success. So that's the egg for carrot 36. And uh, having completed this one, I've got to immediately get on to its brother, which is languishing over there, needing um, exactly the same job done to it. Thanks for watching. Well I said with the second camera I'd try applying some acetone directly to the leather to see if I could peel it off better. Well that works a treat. Pity I hadn't discovered that the first time around. It just softens up that adhesive. Just run some down the edges there. And it's just coming away, it's just peeling away like it wasn't even stuck. I ex expect the servicing of this camera to go much, much quicker than the last one. I've already done the shutter, so it's just a repeat of the cleaning of the body components, really. Focus helical and film advance. Look at that. Excellent. That was great. So I'll use some acetone while I'm here and while that's nicely softened to remove the remains of that adhesive. Got no idea what that stuff is. That's really good. Compared to the fight I had with the other one and uh, the potential damage to the leather as a result, this was great. That's it. That's cleaned up. That's beautiful. So I'll carry on stripping this camera down and get this one serviced. Right, installing the rangefinder back on the camera body. Excuse me. Just going to put a touch of molybdenum paste on that arm there. That's where the arm contacts the rangefinder. Make sure that moves freely. 
Now the range finder is held in place with three screws. The long screw goes down next to the um, rewind shaft, to that hole in the body down there. If I can get it lined up. And these shoes, these screws are shouldered to a certain extent, so they range finder. If the screws aren't tight, you can move the range finder on the camera top, which is important because that's how we make our adjustment for the infinity position. The third screw fits here at the front. So I'll just get those screws in place, just do them up very lightly indeed, and then check the range finder, and I'm looking out the window here, I've got a suitable infinity target, and I see that my images do not quite meet when they reach infinity. So I believe that I need to move the rangefinder slightly this way. This is how the adjustments are made. I'll move the rangefinder very slightly that way and then check that again. Actually, that's very good. That is, I would say that that was bang on. If your rangefinder images, when looking at an infinity target, reach the infinity target before your focus scale reaches infinity, then the rangefinder would have been too far in this direction, and you would need to move it slightly towards the film advance end in order to correct that. You want the rangefinder adjusted, so just at the point that the focus scale the focus knob reaches the infinity position that the images of an infinity target meet just at that point. That's the ideal. So that's done. That part's all ready. The rangefinder moves smoothly with the action. I noticed that my possibly the vertical alignment is, is perhaps not as perfect as it might be with these images. It's very close and I'm not going to muck with it. If I wanted to adjust the vertical alignment of the images, we've got two lenses here at the front. There's a prism arrangement at the back. That's fixed for all practical purposes. Two, arrange two prisms available at the front here, two lenses. This one slides backwards and forwards in this direction with the rangefinder as you move the focus. The other one is fixed. But it's got two screws hold it to the front of the rangefinder. If those screws were slightly slackened and you moved that lens up or downwards slightly, that would affect the horizontal alignment of your images, and that's how you'd go about making your adjustment for the uh, the horizontal the the vertical adjustment rather. That would that would change the vertical adjustments so that you could make sure that your images were moving effectively in the same plane. But I'm not going to muck with that in this camera. I'm quite happy with the way that is. That's pretty, pretty good. So all I need to do now is fit my top cover and I should be good to go. So I'll put a wipe of molybdenum paste on this section. This is the shield that comes down over the uh, uh, film advance lever there. Let's push that um, rewind up so I can get to that knob later. Need to make sure I blow out any dust. Because hopefully this is the last time I'm into this camera.
settle that top cover in place. That's better. Check the action. That seems good. And fit the three screws. These screws are in much the same state. Two of the, the longer screws, one goes here. One goes here. Through this little aluminium plate. Can't got quite get that hole to line up. Let's have a look. Okay. Just got to make sure that I have the top cover pushed backwards as far as it will go. That should align that hole better. That's it. Run that screw up. And that leaves me with one screw left to go in the end of the top cover at the rewind end of the camera. That's the short screw. And the rewind knob. Oh, that's a bit stiff. That should come up so that I can put the film cassette in there, but it doesn't want to move. Um, something not quite right there. Oh, the rewind has just dropped down below the detent, I think. Yes, it has. All right. Wonder if I can get to that from the top. No, I'm going to have to take the top cover off and get to that. And I flip that spring out slightly, get that detent up. Yeah, it doesn't look like it. I may even have to take the rangefinder off the camera so I can remove that rewind completely because the detent spring is fouled up against the rangefinder there and I cannot that's better that's better now let's give that a wipe
It's good. It's as, as it should be. Back where we were.